In this video, we discuss the Weismann 3 diagram of the molecule alene. Alene is this molecule, uh, has three carbon atoms, and um, uh, something interesting about the molecule is that uh, these two H atoms would be in the plane of the whiteboard, but these two atoms would be in a plane that is perpendicular, so there's, it looks like there's a twist uh, in that molecule. Okay, so the goal is to use Weismann 3 to try to explain that shape and see how we do that. Right, so the first thing that we do is uh, we draw the electronic configurations of uh, each of the atoms. We have hydrogen, which has a 1s1 electronic configuration on carbon, is um, uh, helium, 2s2, 2p2. Now, we know that carbon uh, is susceptible to undergo hybridization, so uh, we have to uh, consider that as well. Right, upon looking at this molecule, we see that there's two, type of, two types of different carbon atoms. The central one is special because it only has two connections, which are two double bonds. And the terminal ones, this one and that one, see that you actually have uh, three connections. Now, something interesting about this central uh, carbon atom is that it actually it has a linear geometry around it. Okay, so that bond is collinear to that one. That angle is 180 degrees. And, and that is uh, usually a hallmark for SP hybridization. So we suspect that this carbon will be SP hybridized. What about this one? Well, on this one you actually have three connections, and uh, that is a planar moiety, and the angles are about 120 degrees, which is also a hallmark for sp2 uh, hybridization. And the same thing happens here. Okay, three connections uh, that you have right there, and then the angles between those bonds happen to be 120 degrees, so that, that is uh, also a hallmark of sp2 hybridization. Remember that you can also determine hybridization uh, by using the electron group arrangement. The electron group arrangement is just how many uh, uh, electron groups uh, you have around an atom. Okay, uh, the central atom has one electron group, a double bond counts as one, and one uh, uh, electron group, and again the double bond counts as only one electron group. Okay, so there's a total of two electron groups for that central carbon atom. And when the electron uh, group arrangement is 2, then that is sp hybridization. In the case of this carbon atom, you have 1, 2, 3 groups of electrons, and then this one is 1, 2, 3 groups of electrons, and then when you have uh, an electron group arrangement of 3, that, uh, that is a hallmark for sp2 hybridization. Okay, so that agrees with our geometric considerations, and then we're ready to start thinking about what the valence mole the theory diagram for this molecule should be. Okay, to help ourselves, we're actually going to draw the box uh, electronic configurations of sp and sp2 hybridizations. Okay, so when you have sp hybridization, then the idea is that uh, you will have two sp hybrid or, uh, orbitals, okay, uh, each one with one uh, electron, and then you have two one hybrid uh, orbitals. Okay, which uh, in this case we're going to assume that they are uh, the px, two px, and then the two py. Okay, and each one has one electron. Okay, that is sp hybridization. For sp2 hybridization, then you're going to have three sp2 hybrid orbitals, and then one anhybrid orbital. Okay, and uh, one, two, three, and then I'm not going to label this orbital yet, because uh, it actually uh, results that it's different for that atom and that atom. Okay, so uh, it could be either the 2px or 2py, but we will see exactly how this comes out a little bit, I'm going to write this as 2p interrogation mark. All right, so uh, then we can start to see here how uh, the overlaps might take place, okay? You can see how uh, there can be a lot of interactions between this sp and this sp2. Okay, for example, we see here that there's potentially one overlap between that sp orbital and that sp2 orbital. Maybe there's some overlaps between this uh, uh, hybridized uh, px, and maybe if this is a px, there will be a, an overlap as well. So, so let's try to see if we uh, go slowly and try to see how those overlaps take place. We're going to draw the uh, central atom first. Okay, so the central atom, we know that it's sp hybridized. Okay, so let's draw one of the sp orbitals, that's one of them, okay, sp, and has one electron. And the other sp hybrid orbital looks like this. There's a little lobe there, and then your sp and uh, that is the electronic uh, occupation, okay? So th this looks like it's very nice because it, it allows us to, establish, to start establishing connections with those terminal um, uh, carbon atoms. It looks like you'll have overlaps here which are going to be of the sigma type. But don't forget 
that uh, when you have SP hybridization, there's two additional atomic orbitals that you have to think about. Here we're going to assume that the uh, 2px orbital is this one. It has one electron. And then the 2py orbital will be coming in and out of the plane. Uh, it, it, also, it will also have one electron. Okay, so we're actually going to just draw it like that. And again, this means that uh, it's coming in and out of the plane. All right, so then uh, we're going to move to one of the uh, two uh, carbon atoms. We're going to uh, try to draw that one. Okay, so that would be uh, my carbon atom. And this is sp2 hybridized. Okay, so sp2 hybridized, it will have three sp2 uh, orbitals in a plane and then a perpendicular sp orbital, uh, a perpendicular uh, uh, and hybrid orbital uh, per, uh, to that plane. All right, so let's uh, start with the sp2s. This is one of the sp2s, it uh, has one electron, and then you have another sp2 at 120 degrees, this one, and then you have another sp2 at 120 degrees, this one. And these orbitals will be in the plane of the whiteboard. Okay, each one of these orbitals will have one electron. Okay, so there we go. In addition to this, there's actually going to be a perpendicular orbital coming in and out of the plane, okay, which is difficult to draw, but we're going to draw more or less the same angle as this one. Okay, so we can say that there's another orbital right here, okay, that is a 2PY, okay, that has one electron. Okay, so then let's try to start, start, uh, examine here what the bonding pattern is. Okay, notice that this carbon atom and that carbon atom, they're overlapping. There's an overlap between the sp hybrid orbital of the central atom and the sp2 hybrid orbital of this terminal atom, and that is a sigma overlap. Okay? Now, at the same time, uh, what we actually have right here is that these two py, which will be coming in and out of the plane, they have one electron each. So that's uh, going to give rise to a pi overlap. Okay, notice that the pi overlap requires that the electrons have anti parallel spins, because if the electrons are going to be in the same region of space, which is what happens when you have this uh, overlap, okay, uh, if they have the same spin, then they would violate the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay, so there's a pi overlap. And then we can already understand what's going on here. Notice that this double bond that is, this structure is providing us is, uh, uh, emerges from a sigma overlap between the SP hybrid orbit, one of the sp hybrid orbitals of the central atom and the SP, one of the sp2 hybrid orbitals of the terminal atom. And then there's a pi overlap between the two py and hybrid orbitals on each carbon atom. Okay, so then we can actually say that for the uh, terminal atom that we have right here, that is the two py, and this gives you uh, a pi overlap. Okay? To complete this part of the molecule, we can say that, well, the hydrogen atoms are going to overlap right here. One S, okay, this is sigma overlap, and the other hydrogen atom is going to be right here. Okay, that's another sigma overlap. Okay, so the bonds, these bonds, are just the two an overlap of an sp2 hybrid orbitals with a one S wave function, sp2 uh, hybrid orbital with a one S wave function. Okay, and those are sigma overlaps. Okay, great, so uh, that is the right-hand side of the molecule. Let's try to see if we can do the left-hand side. Okay, so much as before, uh, the sp2 hybridization, uh, or this, the hybridization of this carbon atom is sp2. Okay, so again, you will have three uh, sp2 hybrid orbitals that are in a plane, and then you will have one hybrid orbital that is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, notice that the plane uh, of the edges is now actually coming in and out, okay, of the whiteboard plane. So let's see if we can draw that carefully. Uh, this will be the terminal uh, carbon atom, and you have an sp2 hybrid orbital right here with one electron. Uh, that seems to, to give rise to a sigma overlap. Same as there. And then you're going to have an additional two uh, sp2 hybrid orbitals coming in and out of the plane at an angle of about 120 degrees. Okay, so again, those are hard to draw, okay, but they will be coming in and out of the plane like so. Okay, sp2. And then it will be a one coming uh, inside the plane, an sp2 with one electron and one electron. Okay, this one will be coming out, that will be going in, and the angles will be 180, uh, 20 degrees. Now, um, much as what we had before, that will be uh, the one is wave function of hydrogen, one electron, that will be the another hydrogen atom, one is wave function. Okay, these are sigma overlaps, sigma overlaps, and, and that's the CH part. And again, notice that the, because the orbitals are coming in and out of the plane, then the H's, those bonds uh, that you have right here, 
are perpendicular to the plane of the white board. Now, uh, there's something else that we actually have to do here, and that is that in this, uh, uh, what we have drawn until now, only one of the bonds is explained between the carbon atoms, and that will be a sigma overlap, but we're still missing a pi overlap. Okay, so what is uh, with that pi overlap? Okay, uh, notice that uh, the central carbon atom is forming a sigma overlap uh, this way with that carbon atom, and then a pi overlap with a py orbital, that is 2py orbital that is coming into the plane. But it still has a 2px orbital that is uh, uh, in the direction up and down of the whiteboard. Okay, that seems reasonable that can form an overlap with uh, one of the orbitals right here. Okay, so what is that orbital? Notice that in the case of this carbon atom, okay, your hybridization is sp2, which means that you still have an hybrid uh, orbital there uh, that can form an overlap with this um, 2px orbital. In that case, so that the overlap can actually take place, okay, for this case, that 2px orbital has to be uh, in the same direction as this one, okay, so that is the 2px of uh, this carbon atom, which is 2 sp2 hybridized, and it has one electron like that. Okay, so now you're actually ready to form a pi overlap between these orbitals, okay, the, and hybrid 2px orbitals of the central atom and the terminal atom, and again, that is a pi overlap, and that explains the double bond you have right here. Okay, so in summary, what we actually have is that uh, uh, the central atom is connected to the terminal atoms with a sigma and a pi overlap. But what is interesting is that the pi overlaps are in different regions of, the, of space. Okay, when you think about uh, in what region of space is the uh, pi overlap in uh, the right-hand side of the molecule, what you will see is that, well, you have uh, two py orbitals perpendicular to the plane of the whiteboard. So the overlap takes place here and behind the whiteboard, okay, but in this plane. However, uh, the pi overlap in this region of the space takes place uh, in a plane that is uh, uh, consistent with the uh, whiteboard, okay? The overlap takes place along this direction, and again, it's exactly perpendicular to what you actually have in the other way, okay? So the pi one here will be along this way, the uh, pi one here is along this way, and that is what causes this twist of the molecule, okay? Well, then that, this is a very interesting uh, molecule, and it's, it showcases how beautiful this Lanzmann theory is, and how can it allows you to explain a variety of details about bonding molecules.